So recall that the sequence of nucleotides on a DNA strand in a protein coding gene are transcribed into a corresponding sequences of, sequence of nucleotides in an RNA strand in a eukaryote. That RNA strand moves out of the nucleus and then it is translated by a ribosome into a polypeptide, right? A sequence of amino acids, which then fold together into a complex three-dimensional shape called a protein, right? And so it makes sense that if I change the sequence of the DNA, the sequence of the RNA is going to change and could possibly change the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide, which could change the way that it folds, which could change its three-dimensional shape, which could change its eventual function in the cell. And we've already seen one example of that, right? So if I change GAC to GAT, then the RNA changes from GAC to GAU here and here, but the codon GAU also codes for the amino acid asparagine. GAC and GAU code for that. And so this kind of mutation is called a silent mutation, right? Not all mutations result in a change in the amino acid sequence, a change in the polypeptides, a change in the protein, a change in the function. Second, if I were to take GAA and instead change that to GAC, here the RNA also changes, GAC, GAC, but GAC does not code for glutamate, it codes, codes for aspartate. And so this, I mean, this mutation, this change in the DNA, has resulted in a change in the RNA and a change in the amino acid sequence and potentially a change in the function of the protein. When we change one codon to another, we call this kind of mutation a missense mutation. Third, if I work to take, take GAA and um, instead of changing it to GAC, let's go ahead and change it to TAA. Now my codon changes here and here. TAA, I'm going to rewrite it, TAA is not an amino acid codon. TAA is another stop codon. And so a stop codon is particularly deleterious to a protein coding gene because when the ribosome gets here, it's going to stop. And anything after that new stop codon is not going to be translated, right? The ribosome stops here. And we call this kind of mutation, this early stop codon, a nonsense mutation. Finally, if after this ATG, I went ahead and inserted an extra A, which actually isn't terribly uncommon. Now, instead of this set of codons, I have a different set of codons. Now it's AGA, AAA, TGA, C, T, A, etc. And you can see how these codons are significantly different than the codons that I started with, right? This has changed. Oh, I, I should note that now our amino acids are arginine, lysine, and a stop codon, 
right? So when I insert just a single nucleotide in a, DNA, in a protein coding gene, in a protein coding DNA sequence, it shifts the reading frame. It shifts to kind of that three base pair codon word, um, like where those delimiters are. And it changes not only the amino acid at the location of the insertion, but every single amino acid after that, which can have a dramatically deleterious effect on the protein. And as you can see here, often leads to an early stop codon as well. And so this kind of mutation we call a frame shift mutation. I will note that these are not the only kinds of mutations that we will be talking about. Some mutations are even bigger. Whole pieces of a chromosome added or deleted or copied or swapped to a different chromosome. This kind of mutation is particularly commonly seen in cancer. And finally, I should note that these mutations, we think about them as kind of defaulting to deleterious, right? Except for the silent mutation, which doesn't have any effect on the, on the protein that comes out of. But mutations like this are where new alleles of genes come from. And so many mutations are deleterious. Many mutations are bad, right? They cause that protein to break or not function in the way that it should. But some of them occasionally are beneficial. And a beneficial mutation, a beneficial allele, can provide a reproductive advantage to individuals that inherit those alleles, and those individuals are more fit, and that allele becomes more common as those individuals reproduce more. Mutations are random, but mutations drive evolution, and we are going to spend a significant amount of time later in the semester talking about the connection between mutations and evolution, because it's this that drove the evolution of every living thing on this planet.